hello and uh, welcome to my youtube channel today in this presentation we are going to talk about a very important concept related to semiconductor physics or we can say semiconductor devices today we are going to talk about fermi direct distribution and it is considered to be one of the most important topics to understand so that you can use the semiconductors in a proper way to design different applications so let's start the video first of all let us talk about the definition of fermi direct distribution fermi direct distribution function is a probability distribution function so first of all you have to make a note that it is a probability distribution function used in quantum statistics to describe the distribution of fermions keeping in mind the system should be under thermal equilibrium or we can say it should be in under equilibrium so first of all fermi dirac distribution is related to probability second thing this function or distribution was developed by enrico fermi and paul dirac so in short we can say fermi dirac function describes the probability of finding a fermion in a quantum state with a given energy level at a given temperature so if i have to correlate then fermi dirac distribution function talks about the probability and it tries to find out the correlation between the energy level with respect to the temperature for any particular fermion now the question comes what are fermions and why we have to go through fermi dirac distribution when we have to study semiconductors basically fermions is a family or collection of different types of charged carrier particles like quarks leptons electrons neutrinos and so on and here we can see electron falls in the family of fermions therefore electrons also follow the fermi dirac distribution function so this is the base or this is the main concept which is making us to study fermi dirac distribution now first of all let us go through the basic equation of fermi dirac distribution fermi dirac distributions equation is given here it is equal to 1 upon 1 upon 1 plus e to the power capital e minus ef upon kt i have discussed about this function kt in the previous lecture if you have any doubt related to these topics then do please visit the previous lectures to clear the doubts now in this equation capital e is the energy of quantum state we will come to these topics and clear it in the upcoming slides capital ef is the chemical potential also known as fermi level so ef is fermi level which represents the energy level at which the probability of occupation is 50% at absolute zero temperature so now it things are becoming a bit more clear here we can see the energy level at which the probability of occupation is 50% so this is probability at temperature 0 degree kelvin small k is boltzmann constant given by 1.38649 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 23 joules per kelvin capital t is the temperature at kelvin or represented in kelvin so from the above equation we can derive few things first the fermi direct distribution function ranges between 0 to 1 so the above function this function can range between 0 to 1 only it cannot go beyond 1 that is 2 2.5 3 or so no it is not possible and it cannot go below 
वाई बिकॉज दिस इज अ प्रोबेलिटी फंक्शन तो सिंस इट इज अ प्रोबेलिटी फंक्शन द वैल्यूज ऑफ फंक्शन ऑफ एफ ऑफ ई कैन लाई बिटवीन जीरो टू वन ओनली सेकेंड एट लो टेम्परेचर लो टेम्परेचर इफ यू टेक एक्सट्रीम लो टेम्परेचर दैट इज जीरो डिग्री केलविन द फंक्शन अप्रोचेस वन और एफ ऑफ ई रीचेस वन और एनर्जी लेवल्स बिलो परमी लेवल इंडिकेटिंग अ हाई प्रोबेबिलिटी हाई प्रोबेबिलिटी मीन्स टूवर्ड्स वन फाइंडिंग प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ हाई प्रोबेबिलिटी मीन्स एब्सोल्यूटली पॉसिबल टू गेट दैट फंक्शन और एब्सोल्यूटली वी कैन फाइंड दैट प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स और फर्मियॉन्स इन दैट पर्टिकुलर एनर्जी लेवल तो एट लो टेम्परेचर द फंक्शन अप्रोचेस वन और एनर्जी लेवल्स बिलो फर्मी लेवल indicating a high probability of occupation for those states we will clear these things in the upcoming slide with some diagrams third point to remember is that at energies above fermi level the function approaches zero indicating low probability of occupation so that means at low temperature the function reaches 1 and at high temperature the function tries or tends to zero so let us try to clear what this statement actually means for that let us talk about fermi direct distribution a bit more deeper way the so fermi level basically this level serves the reference energy level that specifies the field electron states from empty electron states so if you now try to correlate what are the filled electron states and what are empty electron states so from previous lectures you have seen we have high probability of finding electrons in the valence band and almost zero probability of finding electrons in the conduction band okay so we can say sorry this is ec energy of the valence band ev and here we have ec energy of conduction band so here we have conduction band conduction band the top and here we have valence band and here valence band means low energy and conduction band of course is at higher energy okay so here it says fermi level serves the as a reference energy level that separates filled electron states from empty electron states so at absolute zero temperature electrons occupy the lowest energy state so remember if we are talking about the semiconductors then at absolute zero degree kelvin all the electrons will be occupying the lowest energy state that means they will be somewhere in the valence band only there will be zero probability of finding electrons in the conduction band provided the temperature is 0 degree kelvin and that is true because in the previous lectures we have discussed that it is not possible to or we can say that uh, the semiconductors behave just like insulators at 0 degree kelvin and when we increase the temperature we can make the current flow or we may give some external energy to these electrons to make them to achieve the conduction band okay so at 0 degree kelvin semiconductors acts as insulator and this is true at absolute zero, uh, zero temperature electrons occupy lowest energy state which is valence shell therefore the fermi energy level now comes to the fermi energy level is the highest energy level that electron can occupy at absolute zero temperature this is the maximum energy level to which the electrons can achieve at zero degree kelvin so in semiconductors and insulators where the band gap 
between the valence band and conduction band are high the fermi level generally lies between the the band gap for example if we have the conduction band and the valence band so here we have valence here we have conduction then because this is eg energy gap okay so fermi level will be somewhere in the middle somewhere we will come to that where in the middle and what are the possibilities of finding the fermi energy level between the conduction and valence band now position of fermi energy level depends on the doping level also let us move ahead and try to have a more insight about the topic so we have the equation f of e where f of e was given by 1 upon 1 plus e to the power e minus ef by kt kt is related to temperature so at any temperature or any k greater than or kt greater than kt greater than 0 degree kelvin okay at about 0 degree kelvin and assuming e is equal to ef so this numerator are going to cancel each out so e to the power 0 divided by kt we will get 1 upon 1 plus 1 that is 1 by 2 what we can extract from this equation from this equation we can say there is a 50% probability because it is 1 by 2 50% probability of finding an electron at this energy level at absolute zero temperature so at absolute zero temperature a the energy or the finding the probability or finding the electron probability is 50% at or below fermi energy at zero degree kelvin okay so now the denominator will become zero or kt will become zero and if e is greater than ef then in that case this term will become infinity okay and 1 upon 1 plus e to the power infinity this term will become almost infinity so 1 divided by infinity will become zero what we can extract from this statement from this equation we can say there is a 0% probability of finding electron with energy greater than fermi energy at 0 degree kelvin so let me recall again or let me go through this concept again so here is the valence band here is the conduction band okay here is the valence band so valence band is at lower energy conduction bands are generally considered at higher energy and fermi level is somewhere middle in the middle of this conduction and valence band so at 0 degree kelvin we cannot or it is impossible to find electrons above fermi energy okay this is the statement derived from second equation so it is not possible to find any electron above ef provided the temperature is 0 degree kelvin first okay second if e and ef are equal or the energy at which we are trying to find the electron is equal to fermi energy provided the temperature is greater than 0 then there is a 50% probability of finding the energy electron finding the electron at this energy level which is e equal to ef now let us go ahead at 0 degree kelvin and if e is less than ef then what will happen the denominator is 0 and e is less than ef so this will become e to the power minus infinity that will become this denominator this term will become 0 so 1 upon 1 will become 1 that means the probability is 100% so we can state here that there is 100% probability because the function is giving us one at the output so 
there is a 100 percent probability of finding an electron with energy lesser than fermi energy at 0 degree kelvin yes it is true at 0 degree kelvin it is if you try to find the electrons below fermi energy then there is a 100 percent probability of finding the electron below ef we will not find a single electron above the fermi energy if we are at 0 degree kelvin so therefore the semiconductor acts as an insulator so this is actually proving that concept now let us take an uh, idea about the uh, energy levels at different degree or different temperatures so here in the x axis we have the energy okay at x axis we have the energy and at the y axis we have the fermi dirac's function f of e now if you see here at 0 degree kelvin at 0 degree kelvin okay there is a 50% probability this is 1 by 2 50% probability so 0 and somewhere here it is 1 okay so there is 50% probability of finding the electron above or below the ef so 50% probability is there that you get an electron above or below the 0 degree kelvin okay now second is as we keep on increasing the temperature you can see at 300 degree kelvin at 2500 degree kelvin the probability okay slowly grows up let us see it in a different way to understand it in a more better way so if we have f of e in the x axis and e minus ef in the y axis and here it can range between 0 to 1 then we can say there is zero probability of finding electron above ef at 0 degree kelvin okay and as we keep on increasing the temperature then the probability of finding the electrons also keep on increasing if this graph is confusing let us go through a more detailed explanation of this function so now we know that in intrinsic semiconductors in intrinsic semiconductor n that is electron is equal to hole and that will be always equal in case of semi uh, pure semiconductors and that is equal to ni intrinsic semiconductors concentration small n that is number of electrons are given by capital nc where capital nc is the effective density of states in conduction band and small p is the number of holes which is dependent on the number of effective density states in the valence band so v is representing valence band c is representing conduction band multiplied by e to the power capital ec minus ef ec is the conduction band's edge and ev is the valence band's edge so we are talking about these edges here we have ec or ev here at the bottom and here we have the ec okay so number of electrons and number of holes in case of intrinsic semiconductor are equal and to find the number of electrons and number of holes we can just multiply the effective density of valence and conduction bands multiplied by the function ec minus cf or ef minus ev please make note of this equation we will discuss it in the upcoming slides now in case of pure semiconductors the number of holes and number of electrons are always equal therefore if we equate these two equations okay and readjust or move the parameters accordingly so this is nc upon nv bringing the nv at the denominator and bringing ec to the right side we will get nc upon nv is equal to e to the power ef minus ev upon kt plus 
e टू दी पावर ई सी माइनस ई एफ अपॉन ए टी एंड रीशफलिंग द सेम इक्वेशन और री एडजस्टिंग द वैल्यूज बिकॉज ई टू दी पावर ई टू दी पावर वी हैव सेम टेकिंग दम कॉमन देन वी विल गेट ई टू दी पावर माइनस टू एफ टू ई एफ प्लस ई सी प्लस ई वी दिस ई एफ एंड ई एफ गॉट एडेड एंड ई सी एंड ई वी आर देर सो ई सी प्लस ई वी डिवाइडेड बाई के टी now taking the natural log to remove the exponential function we can take natural log by taking natural log we can introduce ln here and the e will be removed that we will get ec minus ef or ec plus ev minus 2 ef upon kt this equation is very important when we will have to discuss about the role of conduction and valence bands density level with respect to the fermi energy level ef okay so ef is also a function which is related to nc and nv let us move ahead so rearranging the same equation we will get kt multiplied by ln nc upon nv because the from the denominator we have moved the kt to the left hand and from there we can find ef which is fermi energy level is equal to ec plus ev by 2 minus kt by 2 multiplied by ln up into nc upon nv this is nothing but algebraic representation or just shuffling the values so we can get the actual value of ef which is fermi energy level from this equation we can say or intrinsic semiconductors remember this is about intrinsic semiconductor every time an electron moves from valence band to conduction band it leaves behind a hole yes whenever there is an electron moving from valence band to conduction band conduction and valence it leaves behind a hole the density of electrons in conduction band is always equal to the density of holes in the valence band this is for the case of intrinsic semiconductor okay intrinsic semiconductor so the density of electrons and holes will always remain constant therefore nc will be always equal to nv in case of pure semiconductor or intrinsic semiconductor now we can equate this equation and say nc which is given by 2 to the power 2 into 2 pi m star n if you can recall what is m star n okay and m star p we have discussed about these these are effective mass of electron effective mass of electron and this is effective mass of holes we have discussed about the role of effective mass in two or three lectures earlier to this lecture okay so nc and nv is represented by these equations so that means if i have to assume if it, if i just assume that m star n is equal to m star p then these two equations are almost same so although they are not perfectly equal they are almost equal okay so we can assume that they are equal in such case we will end up with ln nc upon nv because these two are equal will be equal to ln of 1 or natural log of 1 will give us 0 so this equations this term natural log of nc upon n v will become 0 that means this whole term will become 0 or we can say ef is equal to ec plus ev by 2 
that means if we are talking about pure semiconductors then ef will be perfectly in between the at the middle of ev and ec so this is the ef in case of pure semiconductor under equilibrium condition so this is the final equation which tells us that where we can find the ener- fermi energy level fermi level energy level in case of pure semiconductor will be always at the middle of ec and ev so here is the representation we have ec the conduction band ev the valence band in case of pure semiconductor under equilibrium assuming the mass of effective mass of holes and electrons are same okay in that case ef will be perfectly in the mid of ec and ev and now we have made so many assumptions you can keep in mind effective masses are not equal therefore it will not be perfectly at the center second if the system is not under equilibrium then ef will not be at the center if the temperature changes then what the ef will ha- where the ef will shift towards upward or downwards third if the doping changes then what will happen to ef so there are so many things to explore now provided if we keep these things in the mind so for time being just keep in mind for intrinsic semiconductors ef will be at the middle of ec and ev under equilibrium with this i would like to end the lecture if you have any doubts or suggestions please share your doubts and suggestions in the comment box if you have not subscribed the channel then i would request you to please subscribe the channel and share this video with your friends thank you and have a nice day